Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. Health is being widely recognized as a human right. And one of the most important components is access to affordable medicines. But it is not only the national policies which determine whether uh, citizens of a country will be able to have that access or not, but increasingly a lot is being debated and negotiated at international levels. And that is something which impacts lives of people at a very day-to-day -day level. Today we are going to talk about one of uh, uh, the important parts of this entire discussion at the international level, which is the free trade agreements. Free trade agreements are the agreements which are being discussed between two countries or multiple countries, which decide how the trade between those nations will be carried out. And they are generally being discussed uh, on various uh, issues, be it agriculture, be it digital economy, etc. All these discussions impact health as well, and especially access to medicines. Uh, so today we will be discussing uh, the uh, uh, free trade agreement that is being discussed between India and the United Kingdom. It has created a lot of buzz. We also had recently a civil society statement that came out and the letter was sent to the British and Indian uh, trade and commerce ministers asking them not to negotiate certain terms within that uh, and to discuss this and throw more light and details on issues related to this. Uh, we are joined by Mr. Roshan John. Uh, Roshan is uh, a lawyer and uh, he specializes in intellectual property. Welcome, Roshan. Uh, so what we see constantly in the FTAs is, uh, and this has been going on for many years and true for India, UK, FTA as well that uh, the intellectual property is something that is being negotiated about a lot and uh, th this is impacting and or this has the potential to impact uh, uh, India's laws regarding uh, intellectual property say copyright issues or patents or data exclusivity so what is being discussed at the moment and the text that got leaked because these are otherwise very uh, closed door negotiations that happen. Uh, but this which has been leaked, what does it show? What, how will it impact India and Indian law in terms of access to medicines and uh, in the context of intellectual property? Uh, thank you very much, Jyotsna, for having me today. And as you rightly pointed out that uh, uh, the uh, laws that affect people in the country are not just determined by domestic laws, but also by international agreements that happen between uh, several countries or a group of countries. Currently, India is negotiating a free trade agreement uh, with the United Kingdom and it's also start, uh, starting negotiations with other countries also with very ambitious timelines. However, there are many concerns that these free trade agreements have uh, uh, for developing countries, including India, uh, especially in the areas of access to medicines that you have rightly pointed out. The UK-India FTA that is being negotiated shares similar con concerns as it could have a uh, uh, drastic impact on uh, drug prices, medicine prices, uh, and it could impact the timely entry of generic medicines in, in India and in other developing countries. So uh, civil society uh, globally has been advocating against this and, ha and has asked the countries to not negotiate intellectual property uh, chapters which could be one of the barriers to entry of these medicines. India's laws has several public health safeguards which ensures that uh, generic medicines enter, enter the uh, market or enter the supply chain in time. Now this includes uh, Section 3D, the pre-grant oppositions. As I mentioned, India does not have a, a patent term extension system which would uh, increase the monopoly period beyond 20 years or it doesn't have a data exclusivity system because international law doesn't mandate that. All of this that is being uh, uh, sought by developed countries, like uh, as we have seen in the UK's case also, the leak chapter says that they need more and more protection over and above that is mandated by international law. That's why these trade agreements, they put forward this proposal so that they can go beyond internationally mandated rules. Apart from the UK's proposal not only questions the substantial uh, provisions, that means they not only seeks to introduce substantial provisions like patent term extension and data exclusivity, but which would directly have an impact on, the, uh, on when can the generic medicines enter the market. But the UK 
uh, India FTA, the UK puts forward proposals which uh, also directly impacts the uh, directly impact uh, impacts the procedural safeguards that India has. Now, both the substantial safeguards as well as the procedural safeguards, which is incorporated in the law, is necessary to create a balance between uh, intellectual property protection and public interest. Uh, India has a, a procedural safeguard through pre-grant opposition system, which this mechanism is what it allows any person at any time before the grant of a particular patent to a, say, uh, big pharma to challenge that patent at the patent office. Now, how do they challenge it? The, the law provides any person to give information to the patent office to fill the uh, information asymmetry in the patent office so that uh, they can use that information from a third party to decide whether a patent should be granted or not. Now, this is important because uh, the patent is granted against the entire society as a whole. So, it is only fair that everyone in the society at any point of the time can challenge the patent or give information that the patent, why the patent should not be granted. Now, the, uh, the, this, this important safeguard is, is, a, is, a, is an important safeguard against the grant of unmerited patents. Now, what will happen if these, these unmerited patents uh, are granted? So, this again, that would ensure that a particular company or a particular corporation will only have a monopoly period on that particular, on a particular drug. So for 20 years, if an unmerited patent is being granted for 20 years, it will only after 20 years, it can, any other generic com company can enter the market and produce the drug. Thereby, for 20 years, we'll see very high prices for these drugs. Now, uh, the second uh, uh, most important safeguard that I think is being uh, uh, challenged by the UK is India has a law against evergreening, right? So the UK, the UK India FTA, the UK seeks to remove this anti evergreening provisions uh, from the law. So as you mentioned that you pointed out section 3D. Now what does section 3D say? Section 3D basically says that uh, any new form, any new modification or minor changes that you make uh, make to an existing drug, you cannot seek a separate patent for that. Now, why does this law, uh, India have this law? India has this law exactly because to stop pharmaceutical companies evergreening strategy because they don't file, they don't believe in that the one, but one product should have one patent. They file multiple patents on a particular uh, on on one product to prolong the monopoly period. To in order to check that, uh, India in 2005 when it amended its patent law introduced these safeguards like uh, Section 3D, Section 3E, which prevents this evergreening tactics. To give a very good example, which uh, 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 on the eve of TB Day there was one uh, drug, betaquilin which is uh, which is uh, uh, one of the new newer treatment for treatment against drug resistant tuberculosis now johnson and johnson a pharmaceutical corporation has had a pa primary patent on the drug for 20 years which is expiring in july 2023 that is this year and which would ideally mean that any any generic companies would be able to make that drug for a much cheaper price come july 2023 right. however uh, J and J kind of filed a secondary patent application to to extend their monopoly period beyond 2023 July by four more years. They they use they they filed a secondary patent or they filed an evergreening patent uh, uh, patent to extend their monopoly period by four years. Now. Because of India's safeguards, as I mentioned, the pre-grant opposition system and Section 3D, as if you see, uh, the patent was rejected by the patent office uh, uh, on the eve of TB Day, which is which would ensure that the uh, the extended period of four years, the JNJ won't be getting that extended period of four more years, and uh, generic manufacturing can enter enter India and and other countries where there is no. Uh, Patent monopolies. So, which actually means that uh, uh, 
bedaquiline would actually be needed by around one lakh fifty thousand patients a year who are who can uh, are drug resistant. Uh, so every year it would have meant so many people. Uh, so that four year extension would also have actually meant at least uh, something like six lakh people being. Uh, affected by it, so so this is this was big, and actually, um, I think we should thank the access to medicine movement and people like you and maybe other TB survivors who pulled it through really yes, well. Uh, and we are saying that this is what is going to be impacted if uh, India agrees to the conditions that are being put forth by UK. Yeah, so so that's what when uh, the UK now seeks to remove these particular provisions from india's patent law now which would mean that for people like you and me or people uh, people people tb activists or tb uh, advocates who challenge this patent who uh, and other patient group organizations patient organizations which challenge this patent would not be able to challenge this patent now what recourse they are giving they are saying that you can challenge the patent after it is granted but the point is we 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 have seen at, in several cases that once the patent has been granted, it becomes extremely difficult to challenge them and uh, 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 revoke those, those particular patents. So that is why these safeguards are important to ensure that it is uh, it uh, uh, the uh, unmerited monopolies or unmerited patents are stopped at the right right at the beginning. So we are talking about India UK FTA, but it is true that India is actually in the process of negotiating many other FTAs, be right. it with Australia or Canada or European Union. Uh, we also have had a experience, a long, long term experience with RCEP, which was the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, uh, of which India is out now. But we saw the negotiations that went on. Um, in all of these, one thing emerges again and again, which is what we just talked about, uh, where uh, there is this constant demand from India to uh, lower its public health safeguards with regard to intellectual property. Uh, can you throw some more light on that aspect as well? What is happening in other FTAs and um, yeah, that, that, the larger picture? Yeah, of where that, we that, sit? That's, uh, that's correct. So in, uh, India has been now negotiating free trade agreements with several developed countries. So as you mentioned that India has been in negotiations with uh, in, uh, two years back at RCEP, but uh, it, uh, it came out of RCEP. But if you see that when the negotiations happened, India severely pushed back on these intellectual property monopolies. Even in ARPSEF, there were several developed countries like Japan who have been uh, pushing for these intellectual property, higher standards of intellectual property uh, protections to increase the monopoly period of, uh, of medical products and other, other things. But we have also seen that this is not an isolated case. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, India is also uh, in the process of negotiating a free trade agreement with the European Union. Now, uh, some, some of you maybe or you might remember that in 2013, uh, Europe, uh, European Commission or the European Union had clearly said that we won't be seeking any TRIPS plus provisions in, the, uh, in free trade agreements. But then that negotiation stalled for a couple of years when, and now they are renegotiating it. Now, the proposals that have been put forward by the European Union, it shows that they are, they are back to square one and asking for the same demands, which I mentioned patent term extension, which would on and data exclusivity, which would uh, increase the monopoly period of protection from four to five years beyond the internationally required 20 years. So the, uh, the, I, I think India's position, negotiating position should quite be quite clear because in all its international position is quite clear that it says no to anything which is beyond uh, beyond the mandate of international rules. So I think that they should maintain maintain that particular position internationally and refuse to accept and reject all these demands that have been put forward by whether UK or EU, which is clearly uh, beyond the mandate of international rules. Yeah. Right. Uh, but while talking about international trade, it is also a fact that there is a World Trade Organization and the very idea was that the policy, the uh, rules framed there should be governing the uh, trade across. Uh, how are FTAs or other form of bilateral uh, agreements um, bypassing it? Is that correct? or? Yeah, uh, absolutely. How do that, we look that's at it? quite an interesting question because uh, the uh, World Trade uh, organizations, negotiations, uh, when, when I, I can talk in the context of intellectual property, when the intellectual property negotiations happened in the World Trade Organization, the demand from developing countries or developed countries was to have 
uh, a certain standard of pro pro protection across the country, across the world. So th that was their demand. They wanted more than that what existed. For example, uh, as, I, as I mentioned that there has been a demand for patent term extension in order to uh, recuperate the time lost during uh, during uh, the patent application process and everything but this was the same reason why uh, the 20 year monopoly was fixed at the first place right. so uh, if, if if you uh, uh, because countries like india gave a 7 year term protection for uh, 7 year process patent protection for pharmaceutical corporation they didn't have to do a product uh, uh, they didn't have to give uh, give uh, patents on f uh, uh, pharmaceutical products uh, and, uh, up until this uh, uh, trips negotiations happened and when countries had to change their laws so from 7 years it moved on to 20 years so that was okay. that, that 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 was the main reasons when uh, when uh, this was the ma main reason the reasoning behind that the developed countries gave then was the same that is they are giving they to needed have, more money they, yeah they, they they needed more monopolies or more uh, more more extended period of protection yeah so now when when these negotiations that are happening right now is uh, they they are happening in the at least in the context of ip it is they want more than what's been already negotiated with all these countries so they want more than that so the countries have to change their laws so now one of the major problems is that even if suppose India agrees to uh, UK's demand, right? Just hypothetically, if we if we uh, see that if India, it it not only just impacts UK, right? It it's not that if I if uh, if okay uh, if if you say uh, to UK that okay we'll uh, we'll agree to your demands for patent term extension and data exclusivity, it it, it does not stop there. You have to okay. grant this uh, similar protection for all all countries. So it's not going to going to just benefit say a pharmaceutical corporation from UK, but it will also benefit all other pharmaceutical corporation at the cost of uh, at the cost of India's public health safeguards. So, yeah. So, uh, as I as I mentioned uh, earlier, that in India India's negotiating position has been quite clear since beginning that it says no to no to trips plus provisions or anything that it is be, that is beyond international trade rules, and it should. It should be the it should be the case now also that, uh, that nothing has changed since then. Right. Yeah. So so you mean even if one of the so many FTAs, uh, one of the developed countries is able to push India to change its laws, it is actually going to help the entire developed world. So that is where we are. Uh, so uh, and that's why each FTA that India negotiates becomes important because it will change. Uh, our laws, not vis-a-vis -vis one country, but all the countries. So we need to keep a track. We need to keep pushing back against all types of intellectual property protection and actually talk about more and more of public health safeguards. Thank you. Thank you, Roshan, for being with us. And it was really enlightening to know about such technical topics. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much.